welcome back to Crowley House Flower Farm. This week I am going to take you along as I cut some of our first flush of roses and we're going to be selling them off at the, um, the wholesale market and then I'm also going to today I'm going to put together a beautiful garden arrangement for my sister. My sister just had or one of my sisters I have a bajillion sisters if you don't know but um, she just had a little surgery and I thought I would stop by. I made a loaf of, a sourdough loaf and I'm going to take her beautiful arrangement packed full of roses. And we still have some peonies and a few other things on the farm. So I thought I would just take you along as I put that together this morning. And yeah, just kind of show you what roses are blooming. The one behind me, you've seen it on the last video. This one's just beautiful. It's, um, we believe now it's called Alchemist. We had a gentleman stop by the farmer's market and kind of say, I think this is what this is. I have it on my farm. So I think we have a name for, name for her. She's beautiful, beautiful. I'll give you a much closer look at all the roses and tell you kind of some of the varieties that we're cutting right now. Some of them are really flushing and others are just starting to pop through. Um, our David Austins definitely have just started and uh, those are some of my favorites to grow. Of all the roses, David Austins are one of my favorites to grow. It's a beautiful morning and I'm excited to cut with you. I'm glad you could join me. This beauty here is one of the first to bloom in the David Austin collection and this is Darcy Bustle. Beautiful repeat bloomer. I love this one. It doesn't get too large. Four, four feet by four feet kind of, um, you know, size, which is really nice for any garden. Um, it's kind of got a light fruity smell. It's really, really nice. I like this one in the fall, mixing it with a little bit of orange or a light yellow, kind of butter yellow. Very, very beautiful. Some of the first Crown Princess Margaret has started to bloom as well. This one can be amazing. I love putting those deep colors of the Darcy Bustle and Munstead Wood with that peachy color, especially in the fall, like I said, that's just gorgeous, lovely. This beauty is Munstead Wood, another dark, dark burgundy. It's a little bit darker than Darcy, Darcy Bustle and I really do like it as well. This one is a little more fruity. Um, I would say it's in kind of um, sweeter, like, blueberry or something like that kind of a berry flavor which matches that beautiful deep deep tone of the rose that's a fun one to have we have a few queen of sweden starting in as well a lot of times when i'm cutting these so these bushes are probably oh three years old now taller almost taller than me so a lot of times i'll take out that center bloom like this it's hard to do but then you'll get a nice these here, these other buds will flush and be beautiful. So a lot of times we're doing that as well. The Lynchfield Angel is just loaded with blooms, you guys. I cannot wait for this to come full circle, but it's got just three blooms going right now. Beautiful creamy color. Love this one too. This one I'm gonna try and use. I have another couple bushes, but I'm gonna try and use this one, I think, in the bouquet. Not for sure yet. I haven't decided what colors to go with. There are more Lynchfield Angels just starting in. I really want to do a rose video where we are just talking about roses when they're all flushing because they are just a wow, just a huge wow factor. So in about a week or so, I'll try and do another video. I kind of want to do the garden tour and just, it's a busy time of year for us. So it's really hard, but I'm going to try. I'm going to, I'm going to give it my best and then hopefully all the roses will be blooming that's what i'm kind of waiting for is to just give you guys a beautiful show of roses because that is just one of my favorite things is just the farm is amazing then so i will look forward to that and um, hopefully be able to give you some sort of garden tour anyways onward shall we let's go get a bucket and we're going to fill it up with flowers a few stems of whatever i can find here on the farm and i'm glad you can be with me so So today I'm just adding in a little bit of this Christelle uh, Rose Pro. It's a hydration 
fluid that we put in the water and we let the roses sit in there for a while. So while I'm cutting, I'm gonna do that. And then when I fill my vase, I'm gonna use some of the Crystal Two solution, which is the blue bucket. So this is just for roses, um, especially when we're sending them off to a wholesale market, we'll definitely use this to hydrate those roses and it just helps prolong the life of them. So it's a good thing to have for sure. So I've got my gloves. I like using these. I know they're white and they get really, really dirty, but um, they are fantastic for cutting roses. Any blackberry, if you're removing blackberry, the white ones, um, I believe they're goat skin. I get deer, I think it's goat skin. Deer are the, like more of a tan colored. Um, I'm just bringing a little cloth with me with some vinegar on it and that's just when I'm cutting something simple like this. I just wipe down my clippers um, here with a little bit um, of vinegar just to kind of help uh, keep disease down. So it's just something simple. I can just kind of lay it on the side of my bucket and be able to kind of wipe them down as I go. So I think I'm gonna start first with some mint because I feel like any herb that you add to an arrangement, um, especially if somebody is recovering from a surgery or um, just kind of either, you know, mentally down or, um, you know, it's just a hard time in their life, adding mint or something that has this really good sensory can really help and aid in healing. So any herbs, and, and especially mint for whatever reason. I don't know. Lavender, you know, we don't have any lavender blooming. It's starting, it's coloring, so it's beautiful. But um, anything that you can use along those ways really, really does help. So I'm putting a little bit of thought into this cause um, I don't know, it's my sister. So I want it to be extra special. So I'm just kind of creating something. And it's not very often that I get to create by myself here on the farm. Nobody's here today other than my husband and, and kids, but they're all sleeping still, so. I have to farm to myself technically. So I'm I'm gonna go cut and see what I can find and put together something lovely for her, I think. This is exciting. The Cecil Bruner is about ready to just stop blooming. It's sputtering right now and it's got all the little, you know, dead flower heads on it. But um, pretty soon we'll get a high wind and all of them will whoosh away and it's beautiful as well because you get this like snow that just goes everywhere. So there's some beautiful um, forget-me-not down here. So I'm gonna cut some of those as well. I think that blue, blue is my favorite color. So I'm gonna add some of that. A couple weeks ago, the Cecil Bruner was absolutely stunning. I'm gonna pop a picture in here now. Oh, that sun is so bright, feels good. Um, but it's, it is just one of those beautiful wonders that takes your breath away. Out of all the roses, it's one that does. to take a moment and appreciate these uh, St. Paul John's one of my favorites to grow partly because they're a white and they work well in weddings they are so fragrant you guys I might have to pop a few in even though it's not really my color palette for the, for the flavor of it for the smell I might have to do that this one is called Honey Dijon and it's done really really well for us this year beautiful coloring it does better in the fall than in the spring that golden hue and then it just kind of fades into this beautiful kind of creamy butter yellow color which is really fun so you can tell here in the farm that whole line there is coco locos gone oh they're just suckers everywhere this one here is jf kennedy and as well sucker so that whole row is coming out and the whole row of coco locos is coming out 
not gonna grow those. So this is the Coco Loco that I was talking about that we just really struggle with the suckers on it and just, I don't know, it just doesn't produce as well as, you know, the first couple years it'll produce really good and then after that, I'm not sure what I do wrong, but it's just this, I mean, this whole row is just suckers and grossness. So I think for hers, I'm gonna go ahead and start with Distant Drum because they are looking absolutely stunning at the moment. So I'm gonna do some Distant Drum. I think I'm gonna go ahead and add in because the Distant Drum has a little bit of pink, um, purpley hue to it, caramel goodness. I'm gonna add in some of the Lynchfield Angel and then also we have a few of the um, Queen of Sweden that I'm gonna add. So pinks, very feminine. I want this to be very feminine. I think Jimmy the turkey agrees. Oh my goodness, he's so loud. Every time I'm out here, I think the animals just aren't used to me being out here very often. So they're like, what are you doing in our rose patch? <laughs> So this is the stage I'm gonna cut them. That way they last a long time in the vase. So what we're looking for is uh, one to all of the calyx. So this is called a calyx. Let me see if I can get the lighting better. So when I'm cutting the roses, I definitely want um, the calyx. This is what we call a calyx, is this little thing that folds and protects the rose um, as it's growing. And you want one to two of those down before you cut your rose. And that gives you the longest face life. Whether or not you have the solution I have, you're just cutting from your garden, and they're gonna open up just absolutely gorgeous in your home. They don't smell as much until they start to open, but I'm gonna try and get a closer look at the distant drum here for you. So you can see this rose here has um, the single rose in the center, and then it's got a couple buds coming up here. So what we can do is what we call, like we're not ready to cut that, that's too open for wholesale or market or for an arrangement. I mean, I could use it, but we would disbud this. So you take out the center and that's what you're left with. Now, when I sell it, those two will be beautiful. A little more of the lumptuous um, for the mixed bouquet that we're doing or whatever we're using it in. So here's another example of it. This is a good bloom. We have some just starting in buds. So I'm gonna disbud or, you know, some people call it deadheading. Some people call it deadheading because that's too open. It would be gorgeous on the table in the kitchen or in the um, dining room. But now I can wait a little bit longer and I can sell that as a beautiful stem. So the Distant Drum, what we love about it is it's got that caramel center with the kind of, it's almost like a lavender pink on the edges. This bush, you can tell by the foliage, is just a stunner for us here in Oregon. We can grow this without hardly any trouble at all. The foliage looks amazing. There's hardly any black spot. If I don't even see any at all, you guys. These are gorgeous. Now these are the ones that we fertilized with a little alfalfa pellet and then also some rose tone. And they um, have just been just cranking for us as far as the blooms go. So we've got several rows all the way down there. And next to us, because that is a center as well, this is Tiffany Bud, I believe. Yes, Tiffany Bud. This one we mainly use as a dried floral. So we'll come in and cut them um, kind of at this stage, I would say. This might be a little open, but this stage. And we'll hang them from the ceiling in the studio. Uh, so we'll be doing that definitely here shortly. But because it's time. So this week we'll probably get to these. Um, they do look really pretty in a pink wedding as well, but they don't sell very well as a wholesale cut. So we don't, we just dry them and then they'll go into our mixed bouquets for this fall. But look how beautiful, I mean, look at the hand size, you guys. Isn't that beauty? That's huge. And to fill a vase, it's almost like a peony, just huge. It's Sarah Bernhardt peony, that's what it kind of reminds me of.
So I decided to stop here in the tunnel and grab some snapdragons and some sweet peas. The snapdragons, well, they fell over the other day. They got a little bend in them, but that's okay. I am going to, there's a lot that are still good. And so I'm just gonna cut through just, I think three snapdragons. They're so perfumed, so beautiful. And also the sweet peas behind me, you'll see it's kind of a mix match this year because we had a little issue with not getting our seeds. Um, some of you know the story behind that. Um, but we had a lovely listener, lovely um, watcher of the channel send us some sweet peas for next year. So I'm excited to um, put those in. Oh, some of the varieties, amazing. I, I was just so honored and blessed to receive those. I was just really kind of shocked. So I'm going to cut some for the bouquet. Haven't decided what color. I, I'm kind of liking, I don't know, let's go look. This lavender would be pretty, but maybe too punchy. White is always classic. That one's gorgeous. Ooh, this one's really pretty. Again, I'm always drawn to that kind of more of a blue color. This is that King's Ransom. I think it's too peachy brown coral. Um, this one's pretty. What do you think of that? Hmm, maybe this one, or oh, maybe this one down here. What do we think? This one, this one's just that classic, and I like how it's two-toned. Let's see here. That's got that light blue, and that would match. We only have a few of those stems, so maybe I'll grab those, because that would match. I think that blue sweet pea would look really nice with that forget-me-not, and just kind of accent the two. That's what I'm gonna do. Oh, and I got it. I'm gonna do a pink Snapdragon. And then I'm gonna go over and get some, I think Lynchfield Angels, I'm not totally for sure. This is fun. I'm gonna cut some on the vine and some just as a floral piece, like the stem. Uh, just cause I want some of those tendrils. I love that look. It's just so romantic in the vase. you it's a jungle out there sweet peas are always just kind of this overgrown mess and it's hard to contain but you know you, you gotta love the smell and you just I don't know something great about it okay so let's cut some of these kind of they're kind of like a, a pink coral color So these are the side shoots of the original. So a lot of times uh, the, the Snapdragon sends up this beautiful stalk at first, really sturdy, the first cut. And then after that, you get these like little side shoots that come off and they're still usable stems. We don't use them in like mixed bouquets or anything like that or to sell to market. We just mainly use them in weddings, um, partly because I like that thinner stem and you can get a lot more flowers so your bouquet doesn't get so large and heavy but um, that's the color combination so far and we'll go look at it in the bucket and then we'll add to it. So I'm gonna head out to uh, the David Austin patch and go cut something else for this bouquet. I feel like I need a punch of something, something colorful, another color maybe brought in, we'll see. So I found my other color. This is some scented geranium. Oh, it smells so good. Again, it's one of those sensory things. My nose is itchy now. <laughs> but that little pop of purple violet color I thought would be fun to put into the bouquet as well. Thankfully, this one actually I could do without gloves. This is the Lynchfield Angel, which is that blushy, beautiful, doesn't have a lot of smell at the moment, but that's the size I'm gonna cut it for her bouquet and they're gonna open beautiful in her home. Open really fast, cause I'm sure it's warm. So get a couple more, I think we need three. I'm gonna actually take my gloves off because it is kind of a pain in the butt to, to cut roses with gloves on if you have to, but these, which is really nice, have no thorns. Kind of cool. Okay. 
Okay, I think I have enough. Um, I might add to it. We'll see. But I think this is going to look lovely, so let's get started. A garden for me is like a piece of artwork. It comes together very slowly. And I am a flower farm, yes, but I also have these gardens popped through that give me inspiration and so much joy, especially when I'm designing something for somebody special. Whether it be a wedding or something like this, which is a get well. So it can just be something simple I encourage everyone to have a special spot in the garden or in your yard that you can just go out and enjoy and then it brings joy to other people when they come and see your garden. It's like looking at a painting or a piece of art sculpture. You look at it and you're, you're kind of taken back and you don't know quite how to describe it, but a garden can have that feeling for so many people when they come and for me, you know, it came about, especially during COVID, when people would come to the farm and just be blown away by the beauty and the quiet and, and that they just didn't have to think about things too much. It was just the beauty that was around them. And so I've developed my gardens um, ongoing ever since and sharing my gardens with people, especially like you guys who tag along. And I'm not a professional technically. <laughs> I mean, I am a professional flower farmer, but I'm not, you know, I'm not, I wasn't trained in gardening. I just go with more of colors and palettes and I don't know all the names of everything. And I'm not the expert on growing techniques. Um, I learn as I go. I learn from you guys, as you know, and it's just something that I enjoy doing. And so I am creating these gardens here at Crowley House, slowly but surely. It's gonna take years and most of them I will never see fully grown. And it may be that when I'm gone, they will be covered in blackberry. And that's okay with me because while I'm here, I'm going to enjoy them. I'm going to enjoy cutting them, cutting all the flowers, putting combinations together that bring me joy and I feel like, you know, being able to kind of stretch the boundary of color and stretch the boundary of textures and maybe not do it like everybody else, but kind of find my own way. And maybe my gardens aren't the tidiest and maybe they're whimsical and there's some things that probably shouldn't have been put together, but you can always get a shovel out and move them. So anyways, that is what I'm contemplating today as I'm making this beautiful arrangement, but I love how it came out. So here's a closer look. So this is just, like I said, a simple jar. It's kind of like a mason um, jar style, but it's got a little bit of wave to the glass, which is kind of nice because when the water starts to get a little murky, you can't tell. But I love how these color palettes came out the beautiful Lynchfield Angel. We've got the um, Sweet Pea. I gotta figure out the name of that one. It's blue, so there's not too many blues. And then we've got the beautiful Forget-Me-Nots, some Snapdragons, the Mock Orange, the Sweet Pea Tendrils coming off the edge, Scented Geranium, Cat Mint, Mint, and Oh, the Distant Drum, which is, the roses are the, the star of the show today for sure. But we did the Distant Drum, Lynch, Lynchfield Angels, and then um, Mock Orange, I think I said that. But then I found, like, some of our honeysuckles blooming, so I popped just a little bit of that in just for another layer of scent. But I think she's going to love it. I'm going to go make my sourdough really quick, or finish baking it. I'm going to go run it over to her. She's about... Oh, an hour or so away. So I'm going to go get that done this morning. And I'm going to go um, deliver that to her with a little get well card. Just something simple. And, but I love how it turned out. Super cool. So.
Well, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed looking at all those roses. I have to tell you, rose season is one of my favorites. Sweet peas, well, it's hard, it's hard. All of them are, are beautiful. And I love this time of year just because there's so many scents on the farm that the whole farm is just perfumed, especially when the heat of the day comes along. And it's just oh, it's so cool. Anyways, I'm glad you could join me today and I look forward to seeing you next week. Um, I'm gonna try and do a garden tour. I'm not sure if it'll be next week or the week after. I'm, I'm working on it. It's, um, it's a little hard this time of year just cause we're planting so much and I'm not getting back to all your comments, but I am reading them and I value and appreciate all of them. So anyways, if you have a favorite rose or a new rose that you've planted here on your own place, property, garden, farm, let me know what is your, what you are most excited about. I'd love to hear that because I am definitely adding in more roses every single year and pretty soon I'll have way too many. But you know, you take some out and then you add some and it's all good. So anyways, much success in all you do and grow and we'll be seeing you shortly back here at Crowley House next week. Bye-bye.